How are we doing? Good. say we're like you know right there but I think we're getting there you know what I mean like we're trying to get there but it's been a I'm pretty positive priority. about it you know what I mean so but I wouldn't say it'll be announced tomorrow go ahead hey what is what has this been like for you uh, having to deal with all the fans and stuff I don't mean deal with them but yeah I know you, what you, you mean. go from being an assistant coach to somebody who everybody wants their autograph yeah. and their photo taken with what what has it been like for you making that transition yeah you know last year I would say that was a little bit uh, overwhelming you know and, and people tell you you're not going to believe the following that you have at Penn State and, and you know you say okay yeah and then you actually witness it and and uh, experience it. That was so. This year, it's a little bit different because I I did it last year and and uh, had <clears throat> 15 months of experience of that. And you know, it's funny though. You know, you, you like you, you uh, you're in Philadelphia a couple nights ago. You go out, walk around. Nobody knows who the hell you are. You know what I mean? Of course, in Harrisburg and state closer you are to State College, they they recognize you. So, but it's 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 uh, it's fun. It's fun. Well, like when you're at basketball games and stuff, and people are coming up for autographs and, and that yeah. sort of thing, is that uncomfortable? Or? Yeah, I'm not. You know, I, I I really enjoy the people, but I just uh, I, I probably have you know one of the worst autographs in the history of autographs. And <laughs> still don't understand why people want my picture with them, but I do enjoy talking to them and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Just an interesting experience. So I wanted to ask you just about, you can talk a lot about recruiting and scholarships, but yep. I, w I wanted to ask you about with the, the, the NCAA kind of relaxing the rules recently as far as how you can kind of interact with, with kids. Can you just kind of address how you've uh, adapted your staff? You've been, have you, you've been able to add some people to your staff? Or, uh, right. I think uh, Bill Cavanaugh has changed right. his position. Have you been able to add people to your staff, and, and yeah. how many have you been able to do? Uh, we've added a couple people to our staff. Let, just rewind a little bit there. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of the deregulation that, that you're talking about, I think you're talking about like like the mm -hmm. unlimited text messaging. and the. We met as a, as a uh, uh, organization of Big Ten head coaches, and we, I believe led by uh, Fitzy, led by Pat Fitzgerald, we're, we're at the forefront of, of getting those tabled. So a lot of that hasn't actually gone into – play yet uh, you, you know some of those rules so hopefully it'll, they won't go into play to be honest with you because some of them are you, you know they're they're um, they're not good rules for, for division one football but I'll, the other question about we've hired yeah we've so Billy Cavanaugh you know he's uh, doing a lot with recruiting he's not really none of these people are really allowed to talk to recruits or or watch a lot of watch any recruiting film they're, they're really dealing with unofficial visits and things that happen on campus more than anything else um, but uh, Billy Cavanaugh's there then we have uh, John Power uh, who's who's helping us in that department and then uh, Brenna Mathers who's been employed at Penn State went to Penn State and uh, does a lot of like some some of the videos you see on YouTube and things like that she, she works a lot in that area so those are those that's basically the that that you know section of the program. Then we have a lot of what I what I like at Penn State. We have a lot of undergraduate students, male and female, that that love the football program. That help us too. So uh, with mailings and things like that. So it's uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah. How much time has it taken to figure out all the rules? Not only NCAA, <laughs> but NCAA as it pertains to. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it's taking. It, it, yeah, I think it's something that. Um, <clears throat> You know, I try to I try to look at it, I try to stay on top of it, but it's amazing. It's funny you ask that question because you know I'm, I'm always I was just on my email back in the room here, and I'm always trying to every half an hour check my email, and a lot of the emails come from our compliance office just at, just reminders, you know, uh, May recruiting reminders, and and it's like a it's a it's notes that have six different points on it as it relates to May recruiting or summer conditioning reminders, you know, so. The rules are unbelievable to me, and uh, and that's why the the test that we take is an open book test because it would be impossible to to know all those rules, 
but the test we take is open book and we have to make sure so anytime we have a question and this is this is uh, you know something that we stress to our staff and stress to myself is anytime we have a question about something whether it's our own players what they can do uh, in the summertime or whether it has to do with prospects we we call Matt Stolberg our compliance person and he does a great job he answers us and it, you know, pretty quickly on what the rule is, but it, there's a lot of them. We talked last year at this time about your role as, as kind of a voice to, within the NCAA in terms of things like rules and regulations, all that kind of stuff. And you essentially said that you know, down the line, yeah, that would be something that would happen in your career. Has anything changed for you within that? Story? I like to. Um, what, what, I think when you asked me that question, I had yet to be uh, to attend a Big Ten head coaches meeting, you know, so I hadn't even met the other. And now I've been to three Big Ten head coaches meetings, and uh, Pat Fitzgerald's in, in the head of the Big Ten head coaches, and he does a great job of that. And I, I try to listen there a lot, but I also, you know, give my two cents on things, you know. And uh, so hopefully as the years go on, I, I can be somewhat of a voice to uh, to help you know, make sense of some of the things that have to, that we have, you know, like the rules and, and uh, different things that I think are good for the players. Like, like, for instance, I don't, I don't understand why, why, uh, you, you know, in the summertime as football coaches, we can't meet with these kids at all. I mean, what, I don't understand that rule, you know, like we, we cannot talk to these kids at all about football. You know, I don't, I don't get that. Now we follow it quite obviously, but that's a rule that, you know, I think we, we should really talk about, you know, and, and we talked about that as Big Ten head coaches a couple weeks ago. And then, very, you know, why can't in winter conditioning, why can't we use a football? Like, it's football. So, like, why can't we use a football in winter conditioning? You know, I don't, I don't understand that rule, you know, like, but we follow it. Of course we follow it. I, I, you know, I think we follow the rules to a T at Penn State. But uh, there's certain ones that, you know, I think myself and, a lot of the Big Ten head coaches would like to see changed over time. Hey, Bill, how about an image of Mike Maddy that sticks with you, sums him up? Is there, like, maybe something that <laughs> when you think of him you come back to? Yeah, I was, I was just, uh, there's a lot of images, but there's one um, uh, which was a pretty interesting night. The night before the Wisconsin game, you know, I had all 31 seniors stand up and, and talk talk to us, talk to our team about, you know, their Penn State experience, and and he got up and, uh, and, and just gave a very – just a great speech, you know, about his experience there and what it meant to him. And uh, you know, he had he had our one of uh, one of those weight room t sh- t shirts on, like Iron Lions or something like that. And it was you know, it just it was just a neat scene. I was telling Kale Sanderson about it on the bus ride over here, and I, I just remember that, you know, just. But there's a lot of different things I remember, but just that was he was grabbing the podium and talking to the younger players in that room about what it meant to play football at Penn State. Because I would think he sticks out to you. I mean, I know you've only been here a year, but he'd be one guy that, for what he needs at the team. Yeah, he, he does. He, he does, Frank. I, I would say that, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of guys. Somebody asked me this yesterday. You know, there's a lot of guys that, that stick out to me, though, like that, that weren't as, quote, unquote, famous as him. You know, like J.R. Rafice from Scranton, you know, who was a run-on player for us that just loved to play and ran around and did great things. Or Michael Farrell, who played tackle for us, hadn't played a lot of football before we got there, or Stankiewicz, who now is up with the Patriots today, you know, with Stephon Morris. You know, those guys those guys stood out to me too. They all did, you know. But, of course, Michael was a, was a great player and, you know, had a great year for us. So he, he got a lot of media attention. But they, they all stood out to us. Uh, Bill, on the coaching side of things, do you put a lot of weight into advanced analytics or statistics? You know, I do. I do in certain areas. Um, you know, percentages on um, uh, on offense. You know, as it relates to third down, our our own our own statistics, red zone statistics, two minute statistics, the other teams, uh, what they do defensively, kind of the same thing. You know, to try to we have we have a couple people on our staff that that work on that, graduate assistant guys that. But you can't you can't over overload yourself on that. What you're looking for there are tendencies, your own tendencies. You know, I think it's important in the beginning of uh, every game to make sure that you're not doing the same things that you did the game before, unless it's like bread and butter type stuff, you know. 
So you use those reports in those type of ways, you know. But definitely, yeah, we, we try to use those things. And, and when you do evaluations of players, do you have in-house metrics that you've kind of created to measure these guys with? Yeah, it's, I would say especially our own players. You know, we, we, uh, we have things that, that we measure them by in the weight room and that we're allowed to, you know, during the, during the school year uh, on the field. You know, say like even... Uh, like at the quarterback position, you know, we get we keep statistics on these guys during spring practice. We don't make decisions solely based on that. It's kind of you make the decisions based on a whole number of things. But yeah, that's part of it. Stats are part of it. And, and back to the game situation, would you say that the, the those tendencies play more into the play calling, or are you more of a gut kind of take it as it goes? No, I, I would say those tendencies play a lot into go go into play calling and then it's how is the game going are those tendencies holding up you know we're playing um you know i don't know let's take let's take temple last year you know and on third down they hadn't pressured that much going into that game so we we anticipated that and so we were trying to get five guys out in the route and all of a sudden it was chewing they were bringing the house on maddie and you know we had to keep a couple guys in to protect you know so you have to you have to change, you know, when things aren't going the way you expect them to go. Is that the kind of thing you have up here, or do you have it like a game-specific card? Try to have it up here, you know, try to have it up here, have guys that, that have it that can remind me of it during the game, you know. But, uh, you know, you can't really, like, you know, pull out your notes during a game and, you know what I mean? You know, some of those guys have those huge... Yeah, no, I don't have a Denny's menu. I just, <laughs> I just have my, my, you know, call sheet and things like that. Ted Roof left when some other things were going on, and I don't think we ever got a chance to ask you. It sounded like it was a real quick decision to uh, promote John Butler to yeah. the defensive coordinator. Yep. What went into that? And as a follow-up, you have two other guys who've been around for a long time, yep. and you're making those tough decisions. How, how do you right. have to weigh that? Yeah, no, th those uh, those are decisions that uh, that I had to, to make and make quickly, and I feel like I made the right decision there. John Butler is... Uh, uh, an excellent coach, um, a guy that I've known for a while. I didn't coach with him, but I've known him for a while. I brought him to Penn State. Uh, he's a secondary coach, so and he's been a linebacker coach and a special teams coordinator, so he's seen the game from the back end forward, and I think that's important. That's my own philosophy on that. Very quick-minded guy, intense guy, competitive, uh, tough. Kids really respect him. And so, you know, I, I pretty much uh, knew that uh, something – opened up, you know, as far as if Ted ever left, if Ted got a chance to be a head coach or made a move like you made, that, that John would be promoted. And like you said, uh, there's two guys on the staff, Ron and Larry, that are excellent at their jobs, and, and uh, you know, they're very valuable members of the staff. And, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, they're, they're two guys that I kept and interviewed and think have done a great job for us. You know, but at the end of the day, John, John you know, was the guy that was getting a promotion there. So you said the other day that you guys had two three-hour compliance meetings yeah. the last month. Is, is Not in the last month, last like month. since Wisconsin. Since Wisconsin. Yeah. Is that a typical length, or is, is it longer now? And was it, like you said earlier, just you and the other staff members asking questions? And yeah, they, what? yeah. What happens is Matt Stolberg comes over with Andy Bantz, and they, they get up in front of us, and it's like a class. It, it does. It feels like a college class, you know, and uh, – um, and, and they go through all either rule changes or things that we should be aware uh, of that maybe have to do with that time period in the year or whatever it is. And, and uh, you know, we're not – I don't believe we're required to do that necessarily. Maybe we are, but we do it. I mean, we, I, I schedule it with Matt Stolberg, and, and we do it, and it's been very helpful, and it's, it's, it's become a very, uh, a very healthy relationship between – the compliance department at Penn State and our football staff. So I think it's really good. Are there parts of that that um, relate to some of the sanctioned things that you have to deal with, whether it be numbers or getting the numbers at certain times? Is that who you're getting info from uh, with respect to that? I pretty much have idea. Uh, I, I have a good grasp of the sanctions and what has to happen there. Um, but that, you know, if I do have a question about the sanction, maybe a certain part of the sanction, I'll, um, like for instance, you know, which isn't now, but you know, last year, if a, if a guy quits the team, does he still count against the numbers? Yes. You know what I mean? So, uh, 
so I, uh, you know, but I pretty much have a grasp of that now. So no, I would say that answer is no on the sanctions, but everything else they answer questions on, sure. Hey, Bill, right after the sanctions came down, was your goal quickly to try to get as close to 65 right now as you actually are? No. This just kind of happened. Yeah, because of, like I said, you know, like, well, you weren't there, but I was saying this earlier about the open transfer rule. Sure. You know, that's because that was in place guys chose to use it and uh so we're we'll probably be right at 67 when training camp starts is there a benefit somehow to this at all that you're not down right there now. not right sure. now yeah. some people have wondered fans me at times if you get to 65 is there any chance of starting that 65 early that'd be a good question for the ncaa Hey, Bill, coming out of spring, um, you're trying to replace Jordan Hill mm -hmm. on the nose. You have three young players, I think, that you've talked about. Right. Do you feel better about them coming out of spring? Mm -hmm. and do you have an idea of maybe going into August where they all kind of fit in, at the nose tackle spot? Yeah, three jo redshirt freshmen. Right. Jordan Hill uh, will, will be very – you don't replace a Jordan Hill. You know, here's a guy that completely dominated the Wisconsin game. I mean, just – you know, in my opinion, single-handedly won that game in many respects. So, tough to tough to replace a uh, you know a third-round draft pick. Eighty, I think he was the 87th player taken, which is for a defensive tackle that's pretty that's pretty good uh, inside tackle. So, we we do we have some really good young players. We have Daquan Jones coming back, obviously, who's going into his last year, and then uh, Deion Barnes at end coming back. You know, but in, inside we have. Um, Austin Johnson, who we think very highly of, he just needs to play. He just needs a bunch of reps, and he got that in the spring and plays hard. And he's a fantastic kid. We would recruit him over and over again at Penn State. You know, just a great family, smart guy. Kind of, you know, hopefully ends up being like a Jordan Hill type of type of kid for us. And then uh, we have Brian Gaia and Derek Dowry there, who who are young players, tough guys, good guys, good students. We're highly recruited coming out of high school. And really happy that we have them. We would recruit them again and again. So, you know, we'll, we'll, those guys will play. Sure, those guys will play, and we'll rotate. You know, we rotate guys in there, keep them fresh, and uh, that's what we'll do this year. Those could be three months, and all these teenagers are gone. They're out there, and you hope they're working, right? Right. But what? I mean, you're not a guy. You don't get concerned. Maybe you, get, you don't get anxious. You might a little concerned. Or, you know, what do you think can keep them on track in the summer? Well, I think we have a fantastic strength staff. And, uh, you know, you're, you're right, you know, you're not around them, so there's a certain anxiety about not being around them. You know, you just, that's why you coach. That's why I was saying earlier about the rules in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you coach to coach period. the players. Yeah, that's what you love to do. And then in the summertime, you're not allowed to be around them. You know, it's just, it's my It's a lot of self-responsibility. I guess that's my sure. question. Sure. So what we do is in the spring, especially towards the end of the spring, we try to educate them on what they need to do to get better in the summer individually. That that is going to help our football team. And so, and then our strength staff just does a fantastic job of working with these guys in the summer. And they most of these guys are taking classes, so they have a busy schedule. Whereas it may not be as busy as it as it is, you know, in the winter and the spring, and obviously the season. But you know, they're taking a couple classes and. They're working out, and uh, the workouts are voluntary, but uh, but they go in there and, and uh, they work very hard. And so, you, you know, I, I believe, Mike, I, I really believe this. I said this earlier in, in Lancaster. I got I have a very good feeling about the type of kids on our team again. I love these kids. I think it's a great group of guys, and I think they're self-starters. And uh, whether that leads to a bunch of wins next year, who knows, but I think they'll come back in better shape and stronger and, uh, more knowledgeable about what we do, and you know, on offense and defense, and I, I believe in these kids, and I think they'll do well this summer. You know Chip Kelly, Bill. I do know Chip. Yep. Now that he's nearby, are you gonna? Are you planning to meet up with him at all? Or? Probably not. Nah, just too busy. You know, it's tough. He's busy. I'm busy. Probably not. Are Philadelphia you, is not like around the corner. You know no. what I mean? Are you a guy? I, I thought it was, and then I <laughs> tried to drive there one time. Are you someone who likes to go check out other how other teams do certain things yeah sometimes sure yeah if I can I will you know I've been been to other places uh, but you know he's brand new there and trying to get his team going and certainly we have a lot of work to do at Penn State so I don't think I'll be able to make it to Philly to watch the Eagles practice I wish I could but but uh, he's a great coach and you know he's got a 
a lot of good uh, good ideas. So he'll do a great job there. Did your guys get any any of your coaches get anywhere to see other teams practice, or conversely, did teams come and check we, out for your practice? We had a lot of people visit our practices. Yeah, we had we had a lot of schools visit our practices. Um, everybody ranging from Air Force to Cornell came through, and then obviously millions of oh, not millions, but you know a bunch of high school coaches came in and saw us practice, and that was fun. Uh, we didn't get anywhere this year. I went last year. I went down to Alabama. That was a great trip. I've been there twice, and uh, but not this year. Just didn't have time. Didn't work out that way. But it was good to have the other staffs come in. Ed New Hampshire was here, and Brown was here, and uh, a bunch of staffs. So it was good to have them. Uh, some guys that have coached in the NFL came by and talked some football with them. So it was good. From a recruiting standpoint, I know you can't talk about specific guys, but I don't know if surprise is the right word, but the level of talent, uh, talented kids that seem to be interested or have committed or whatever, has that su surprised you? We, we were, yeah, it's a good question. You know, we were concerned about that when the sanctions came out. And, um, and, and I think it's, it shows you, in my opinion, the power of Penn State. What has been built here over years is uh, a place where you know, it's just a special place, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, it is. It's to to play college football here and to go to school here is, in my opinion, an incredible experience. And so we've we've found that out. We had 67 unofficial visits to our spring game, and uh, we we have tremendous interest in our program. Now, you know, the problem for us is we can't sign them all. You know, we can only sign 15 a year. So. Uh, we have to do a great job of making sure we're filling our needs and taking the right kids, but uh, there is no lack of interest in Penn State. You know, somebody said when um, when the sanctions came out that Penn State football would become irrelevant, and uh, that's obviously not true. And and so, uh, you know, we we feel good about where we're at. It's just you know it's going to be a hard climb, but but we uh, we we have a lot of kids that are interested in our program. How unique is Urschel from any player that you've been around? Yeah, every play. Yeah, you know, every player is unique. So he's unique in the fact that he's a very, just as a player, he's a very flexible guy. He's strong. He's powerful, uh, and then obviously he's a very intelligent guy. He's also an intelligent football player. That's where you, sometimes those things don't always correlate. You know, you, sometimes you, it's rare that you have the guy that's the four zero in math, and he's also the best right guard in the Big Ten. You know what I mean? Like those don't always go together, and. Uh, so to me, that's what makes him rare, and he's a fantastic kid. And I mean, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's heard me tell this story, but you know, I get a printout every day of during spring practice of uh, guys that have to leave practice to go to class, go leave practice early to go to class. So it's kind of color coded, you know, like red is freshmen and orange is sophomores and blue is juniors, and then there was like a purple color or some odd color, and it was Urschel. So I asked, <laughs> I asked Todd Coke, I said, why? why is his color purple? And he said, well, that class he's going to is the one he's teaching, and he's <laughs> proctoring that exam. <laughs> Trigonometry or something like that. He was actually teaching that class. So, he, you know, he's like the, the embodiment of what Penn State's all about. You know, that's what it is. So. Well, some of your players who didn't get drafted ended up in some spot, in a spot that's familiar to you and you know, like you said before. Did you, I know there was a short time when the draft ended to when those guys actually signed. Yeah. Did you, did they reach out to you? Did sure. Did you offer any, any, uh, uh, I wouldn't say advice. I mean, those guys, the, you know, all of those guys had agents, and you know, the agents have all the answers. So they, they, um, they were in good hands. But you know, I just uh, mostly text message. I spoke to Matt McGloin a number of times on the phone, trying to help him out. But uh, but mostly text messages, just congratulations, and how proud we are to 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 have been associated with those guys, and they'll do great. Those those organizations that that have those guys in there. You know, on their teams right now, or to me, those are uh, great things for those teams. So, you know, really good kids, and I hope they all make it. You talked a lot about sort of the mindset of practicing and playing fast. Right. Does does that tempo recalibrate itself in the spring based on a new team, a new year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you start over again now. What we did in the off season, we did a really good job. I thought a better job than we did last year because last year we were new and it was just in the offensive meetings. It was just me standing up in front of the staff and teaching them the offense. 
You know what I mean? So it was because nobody in that staff room when we first got here knew the offense. You know, I brought it from New England. So, so this year the guys on the staff felt a lot more comfortable with the offense. So now we were able to go back, study what we did last year, and, and tweak a lot of it, tweak all of it. And so then you start over with the players again. And, and I learned this in New England. I learned this from Dante Scarnecchia, who's the best line coach in the NFL. And, and I remember, I'll never forget this. You know, you're coaching Tom Brady. You, you just, you, every year you go right back and you start from scratch. And you teach these guys from the bottom up the whole offense again. And then as you're doing it, you implement the changes that, that you make and, and for each year. And I think we've made some good changes. And, but, we, you know, still with the emphasis on playing at a high tempo and mixing it up and things like that. But uh, you definitely re, re, recalibrate. It's a big word, Nate. Not one that I really understand, but I think you mean start <laughs> over. Adjust. Adjust, yeah. What's your, after you get done doing the tour, yeah. and since you can't work directly with the players, what yeah. is your schedule like? Do you get a chance to take a step back at all, or are you still nose to the grindstone straight through? Sure, it's a slower period of time for us. Yeah, you can, you know, I'll spend more time on my family. Like, I can't wait to get back tomorrow. I'm going to go to the cross game at 3 o'clock. I mean, looking forward to that and um, spend more time with the family. I know I'm going down on Saturday night to a P-car dinner down in down at Hershey, down at the lodge at Hershey with my wife. That'll be interesting, and fun, and uh, but you know mostly take a step. And then when June, when June hits, we have a lot of camps, you know, and those are important. And uh, you know I think you could Russ is sitting in the back and Kale. You know our camps are like so vital to our programs, you know. And actually Russ was the guy when I first came here that was talking to me about how camps were, how he runs his camp and. You know things like that. So camps are big in June for football. So I'll be there for that. And in July, uh, take some time off and then come back. You know, ready to go.